Psalm 119, verse 71. It is good for me that I have been afflicted that I might learn thy statutes. Because the Hebrew word here used by the psalmist is very descriptive. It means it's good for me that I've been browbeaten, troubled and abased and chastened and defiled and hurt and humbled and weakened and depressed. It's all been good for me so that I can learn the Lord's statutes. And the word statutes here means an engraved law. And what the psalmist is saying is good for me that I'm going through all the trouble I'm going through because in the process he's engraving his laws in my heart. It's been engraven, not just written, but engraven. There's affliction among God's people because the Bible said many are the afflictions of the righteous. And if you say you're righteous, you're afflicted. Do you ever wonder why Israel, when Pharaoh got so angry, he took away their straw and he said taskmasters and began to beat them? Because God said, I am coming down. I'm going to deliver you. I will deliver you. This is the work of God. And the Lord said, I've surely seen the affliction of my people in Egypt. And I've heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters. For I know their sorrows, and I've come down to deliver them. I know their sorrows. Now, folks, if that doesn't give you comfort right now, nothing will. Whatever you're going through this morning, whatever kind of test, whatever kind of suffering that you face right now, God says, I know your sorrow. You can't do it by yourself. You can manipulate, you can do anything, but this is my work. Exodus 6, verse 6 and 7. Therefore say unto the children of Israel, I am the Lord, and I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians, and I will rid you out of their bondage, and I will redeem you with a stretched out arm and with great judgments, and I will take you to me for people, and I will be to you a God. Here's what David said when he faced that big giant. And the assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear, for the battle is who? The Lord's. And he will give you into our hands. And 1 Samuel 17, 50 says, And there was no sword in David's hand. There was no sword in David's hand. David didn't take matters in his own hand. He didn't say, I'm going to bite the bullet. I'm going to fight this through. I'm going to do it on my own strength. Folks, you're bound for failure. You can't beat any giant in your life unless you believe that it's the Lord's battle. It is the Lord's battle. Hallelujah. No, you see, your part and my part is to believe what he said is true, that he will deliver you if you will trust him, seek him with all your heart, hate your sin, and then turn him and say, Oh God, you are my deliverer. You are greater than all my enemies. The sword is in your hand, Lord. You deal with the enemy. You deal with it. Now, here's the key. I will save you out of bondage so that I will be to you a God, and you shall know that I am the Lord your God. But God says, now I want you to let me be a God to you so that you experience miraculous deliverances so that you can testify just like these in the word of God. I want to be God to you. I want to deliver you. I want you to see miracles. That's the purpose of afflictions. Afflictions come to drive us to the Lord, to bend our knees, to teach us to learn to pray and cry out to God in all of our problems. Psalm 77, 2 says, In the day of my trouble, David said, I sought the Lord. When I got in trouble, it drove me to the Lord. Before I was afflicted, I went astray. But now I have kept thy word. He's saying, I was lazy. I was spiritually dying. I was losing my first love. But since I've been afflicted, now I've been seeking the Lord. When he was in affliction, then he sought the Lord and humbled himself greatly before God. David said, I know, God, that thou in faithfulness has afflicted me. You've been faithful. The affliction that I'm going through is a part of your faithfulness. Whatever you're going through right now, he is going through it with you. Isaiah 63, 9. In all their afflictions, he was afflicted. And the angel of his presence saved them. In his love and in his pity, he redeemed them. And he bare them and carried them all the days of old. Every time they were afflicted, God hurt with them. In fact, when Israel sinned and they brought misery down upon them, even then, though God said, and his soul was grieved for the misery of Israel. But you have got to understand, no matter what you go through, no matter what your trouble, he hurts with you, he feels with you, he grieves to see you broken, and he wants more than anything else to deliver you. We serve a loving Father. The moment you feel grief, he feels your grief. But God started your deliverance the first moment you cried. God went in motion. You may not see it. There may be no evidence to you in front of your face. You fall on your knees. God falls on the bush. 
Immediately, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked and behold, the bush burned with fire and bush was not consumed. Israel has just cried out to the Lord. They don't know it. They don't see it. But God has already taken charge. God's already set in motion their deliverance. First time you prayed, God heard you. God started acting. He's already put the bush on fire. Afflictions get much worse just before the deliverance comes. You know when God gives you these promises and God comes to you with the living word and you know it in your heart and the devil knows it, he trembles every time you go into the secret closet. He knows that every tear you shed is being bottled by the Lord. He puts your tears in a bottle. He knows that weeping endures for a night, but your joy is coming and it's morning. So folks, if you've been praying and praying and it's getting worse, start rejoicing. Start rejoicing. Your deliverance is right at the door. Just keep crying. Just keep trusting. Just keep praying. Seek His faith.